Hi everyone, I'm pretty excited to be doing our fantastic demo again. It was this time last year we were here, we had so many people that came out um, to watch the demo. So obviously we're very adaptable, so because of these unprecedented times we are doing this live, um, which is exciting for us and it means I can't stuff up because it's live. So I'm nervous, but not really. Um, so let's get started. I've got three recipes for you. Um, also, I should introduce you to Uncle McGee. He was here, here last year too. Uncle McGee is the food director of Everyday Gourmet. Um, he is the glue to Everyday Gourmet. So he's come along for the ride just to make sure everything is seamless. Um, and so we can really show you as much as possible within our 45 minutes. Also, I want to introduce you to the lovely Mary from TFAL. Oh, Mary, it's so good that you're here. And just, oh, can we pan down over here? Just have a look at these gorgeous shoes. <gasps> Don't look at mine. Oh my gosh, mine are terrible. Anyway, I need a pair of those. <laughs> so Mary's here to ask, uh, answer any of your TFAL questions. Of course, I am here to answer all your questions. We love questions here at Kitchen Warehouse. TFAL loves questions too. Um, so by all means, shoot them through as we get cooking. So for the menu today, we're going to be doing three things. We're going to do an entree, a main and a dessert. Um, I'm going to do a sort of a vegetarian or pescatarian style entree. Um, then we're going to be doing a fried chicken dish. But we're going to be doing it in the air fry, the ultimate fry. It's my new favourite appliance because obviously it air fries less oil. So that's really amazing. And then we're going to do a bugatza, a Greek style bugatza in the Ingenio cookware. Um, so for those who know me, you would know that I love the pressure cooker. Collie, I go on about the pressure cooker all the time, right? All the time. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to be doing um, a bordelotti bean recipe. It's pretty much, it's a bruschetta, but we always think bruschetta and we always think tomatoes. Forget about that. You can also do so many different things. Going into winter, I wanted to show you how amazing it is to cook beans, pulses. There are so many different pulses from the chickpeas, uh, bordelotti beans, what do you reckon? Kidney beans. There are so many different things that you can do from dried, you, you soak them and then you cook them. Now, if you wanted to cook this the original way, it would take a few hours. But what I love about pressure cooking is you get those slow cooked results done fast. And that's what we want in this day and age. In winter, my mum would have the pressure cooker on her stovetop and it was a TFAL one too. Um, every day, I reckon, she'd come home from work at six o'clock. She'd still be able to cook a quick osso buco, a boeuf bourguignon, because it cuts the time in half at least. So usually a boeuf bourguignon would take about two hours to cook slowly um, on the stovetop or in the oven. You can do a boeuf bourguignon in 45 minutes. That's why I love it. Okay, shall we get started? Any questions so far? That's just to get cooking. This is what I do. I talk for too long and don't get onto it. So the Clipso Minute, uh, this one I love because it's big. It's a nine litre capacity uh, pressure cooker and it comes with a basket with a trivet in it so you can steam things. The other day on Everyday Gourmet we did a, what did we do Cole? A sticky date pudding. Sticky date pudding and it was amazing. A steamed pudding, so delicious. Usually it would take about an hour and a half to cook just, just in a gen, general, in a general, oh I can't speak English when you're just steaming it in a normal pot, but we did it in about 20 minutes. So that's how good it is. I'm not gonna use this for today. I'm just gonna cook straight in here. So like I said, it's a huge capacity one. Um, so you can cook a big batch and it's all about big batch cooking now. We're all at home thinking about what to do. Cooking has gone nuts. There are so many people cooking at the moment. I know Kitchen Warehouse has been so busy. You guys have been so busy with people wanting to, to cook at home. Um, and these have been really popular. So that's why I want to cook in it. So the beans, bollotti beans. You can see that they've got this beautiful zebra-like pattern on them. Um, I love these because they are so creamy when they're cooked for a long time. But you, you know, you can actually cook these straight in the pressure cooker as is with lots of water and they will work. But if you've got some time, please de rehydrate them. So in the, the night before, lots of water, just cold water, and you soak it. And you can see the difference. See how much they've absorbed the water. They've almost doubled in size. So like I said, if you don't have time, the pressure cooker will still cook them for you. Instead of cooking them in half an hour though, you'll need to cook them for about an hour. So that's still pretty good for a dried bean. But like I said, I have pre-soaked mine. I also find if you pre-soak them, you get a creamier result. So they go in, okay. And you need to give it some flavors. So one carrot goes in, um, a few fresh bay leaves. Uncle Collie's got a big bay leaf tree 
in his yard. So he's, we've got an abundance of bay leaves. You could also put other hard herbs, uh, rosemary is fantastic, thyme's fantastic, even sage and borlotti beans is fantastic too. Um, this is a trick mum would show me. So she does this for, you know, a lot of um, stews and soups. You put your cloves into your onion. So we're studying the onion with cloves. And this is going to not only perfume the onion, but also perfume the stock that's going to be made uh, with our bottle beans. Oop, one's gone in there. And you can also find them. So except for that one, there'll be one stray one in there. Let's get him out. Here he is. Um, so you won't, you don't want to bite onto these like as when they're whole like this. You want to sort of be able to take them out of your bottle beans. A few more. Okay, done. Now we need to cover it with water, about two litres of water. When you're pressure cooking, you also don't need as much water or as much liquid um, as you would usually have in a, uh, you know, in a slow cooker pot or even in a slow cooker. Because it's cooked under pressure, there's, no, there's not much steam that's able to escape. So um, you can imagine how, what happens in there. It's gonna be an intense cook and all the nutrients are gonna stay in the actual beans. Now this Clipso Minute is pretty cool because, and this is particularly if people are just starting out with pressure cooking and are a little bit hesitant. Um, when do I turn it down? When, has it, when does it come to temperature? When does it come to pressure? Um, what temperature do I turn it down to? This takes the guesswork out of it because it comes with an integrated sensor. This is this little fancy thing here. So it not only times it for you, it'll tell you that it comes to pressure, so an alarm will go off, and then you simply turn it down and keep cooking, and then it tells you when it's cooked. Pressure cookers these days, and I know at TFAO, there's two that I love. There's this one, the Clipso Minute. They also have a Cook For Me, which is also a fantastic pressure cooker if you wanted to go um, on the appliance side. So there's two options there for you. Um, so basically, we're gonna put that on, we're gonna lock it, and this is just a one handle, so it's just seamless. Shaz, I can see you there. So you've got a question from Karen. Yep. Um, so basically she's asking, is the taste and quality the same if using a pressure cooker instead of a slow cooker? And what's the benefit of a slow cooker? Yeah, so it's, if the, the question was, does it taste just as good if you're slow cooking? Yes, and to be honest, I'm gonna say it tastes even better. Um, the results of cooking meat in a slow cooker um, is just second to none. It falls off the bone. Um, it just, the meat stays very, very soft and tender and it's super reliable. Um, I know in winter, I don't want the oven on all day. I don't want to be waiting for it. And I think pressure cooking is one of those things where you get this beautiful glossy sauce, um, you get a beautiful result, done fast. Um, it's just getting over the first, um, sort of intimidation of when to turn it down and when not to. So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna put this on full blast, boost. It's also induction friendly, uh, which is good. So I mean, you never know if you wanna move houses, you wanna make sure you can take your pressure cooker. And I love, I love induction. <laughs> Let's just, okay, it's on. So I'm gonna, so once I've turned it on, I'm gonna put my timer on. So you can see this timer here. I don't know if you can see here. I'm gonna set this for 20 minutes, okay? Let's go 20 minutes. Okay, that's on 20 minutes. Now this is going to heat up. It's gonna start bubbling away. And then what's gonna happen is the, the timer's gonna go off and it's going to notify us just to turn the temperature down. All you have to do is just turn it down to a medium heat and then the timer starts. So it starts to count down and then it's cooked. It's as simple as that. Um, so while they're cooking, and I do have some I prepared earlier because I want to show you the end results. Thanks, Collie. I'm going to get rid of that. I've got another question yes. from um, Julie. Yep. So she's basically asking if you can make, if you can make a stock, yep. then why isn't it recommended to make soups in a pressure cooker? If the... So if you can make stock in a pressure cooker, yep. why, why isn't it recommended? So that soups. question from Julie was, if it can make stocks, why can't it make soups? That's totally incorrect, Jules. Um, or Julie, I don't know you that well yet. Um, <laughs> but it can absolutely make soups. In fact, it makes the best soups. Pumpkin soup, five minutes. Hand on my heart, five minutes, depending on how you cut it. Um, it can cook soups. I think the, the most, 
with my pressure cooker, I cook a lot of things in it, but I'd cook a soup in it once a week. So yeah, forget whoever's told you that, tell them they don't know what they're talking about. Come to Justine, I'll answer your question. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in here is uh, I'm gonna heat this pan up. I'm gonna add lots of oil. Colin, I'm gonna swap this over to the one that we've prepared. Sure thing. And I'm just gonna put it on a high heat, if that's possible, that one. Um, I'll just shove it there. Yep, yep. cheers. Okay, so I'm just, I love, I love induction. Have I mentioned I love induction? <laughs> so reliable. <laughs> let's go, let's crank that. Okay, now we've got some prepared, they're just warming up. Um, I'm going to add a good glug of extra virgin olive oil, okay? Good quality Australian extra virgin olive oil. I want the, com the base of the pan completely covered. Now I'm gonna be using my Ingenio set here, which is fantastic because you've got a detachable handle. We're gonna talk about that later when we get up to the Bulgatsa, but I'm using it also for this. I'm gonna fry some bread. Now you can grill this if you like, um, but I think that, and, and it's fantastic by the way, it's absolutely delicious, but I was in Tuscany. Oh, do you remember those times when we could travel? Seems like a far, far, far away distant memory of when we did travel. But last year when I did a cooking class in Tuscany, I just loved it. Um, we went to this really tiny little old village, um, probably about an hour and a half away from Florence up in the mountains and they cooked the most simple peasant-like food and this was one of them and it was literally bruschetta that has been fried in loads of good quality olive oil and then the beans were put on top with some anchovies. It sounds so boring but I'm like I have to cook this for you and you have to make it at home because the results are so delicious and it's so simple and I think bruschetta is one of those things that you can changed and you can really showcase um, the different seasons so going into winter this is the perfect winter dish going into summer of course change it back to tomatoes so frying it in lots of oil or butter if you like or a bit of both let's just stick to the italian style today um, you want to fry 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 until it goes golden it's going to be a sponge it's literally going to drink up all that oil um, and it's going to be absolutely delicious and it won't take long at all any more questions? Questions, guys, more questions, please. I love the questions. Yeah, got another question. <gasps> okay. Why do you prefer induction? Why do I prefer induction? Oh, I was being um, sarcastic <laughs> because no, I'm only joking. I was just struggling with that. I actually, do, I don't mind induction. I prefer um, uh, gas, but if I had the choice, I would have one induction and then gas too, to be honest. <laughs> I was just struggling with it. Sometimes it's sort of a bit temperamental. Um, so yeah, that's why, oh, there we go. I'm just gonna turn this over. This is what we're after. See this color? This is just perfect. It's so crispy. I'm just gonna grab some paper towel. You've got another question from Aussie Buddy. Yes. How do you stop the oil from splattering? How do I stop the oil from splattering? You can actually get these um, guards and I think Kitchen Warehouse probably has them. They are so nifty. You just put them on top. So let's just say you're cooking bacon on your stove top. And this is the one thing I don't like about gas is it splatters everywhere. You've got to clean it. Induction, you just quickly wipe. So that's great. Um, and they literally just stop the splatter, which is a really, really great thing. Um, also, the reason your oil is splattering is because of the moisture. So there's no splatters there because there's no moisture in the bread. Um, bacon, when it's starting to get crispy, the moisture comes out and it splatters everywhere. So it's just the water and the oil and they're not great friends. Thanks, Colin. I'm going to get that. I mean, what would I do without Colin? You know, like really, I don't know what I would do without him. So um, I am going to open this. So the timer, we've actually got this on high heat. Oh no, where's our old ones, Colin? I'm gonna put them on high heat. Yep. I'm gonna put them on high heat because I want that timer to go off for you. I really want you to hear how it bips and then how to turn it down. So just crank it on high, Cole. No worries. Um, and I'll just start that timer. Yep, perfect. So Joanne's got a question yes. for you. Yes. How, how much beans did you use? How many beans? 400 grams of beans to about two litres of water for a nine litre capacity uh, Clipso Minute, so the TFAL Clipso Minute. Um, and that's all you need, really. Okay. Um, one thing also with a pressure cooker, and particularly this one, this one is so, 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 so safe, is 
if it's if the pressure if the steam has not been so when you want to release it there's a release i don't know if you guys can see just here we can take our timer off this so we actually and you can actually slow cook in this if you want to too and you can see how that, that's that indication there when you press that the steam is released okay that's closing it um, but you won't be able to open this if it's not safe and there's this um, misconception that pressure cookers aren't safe way 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 back in the old days you'd hear of those crazy stories about uh, pressure cookers you know uh, blowing up and all that forget about that these days it just doesn't happen um, very you'd have to do something pretty significant for that to happen um, and the beautiful thing about this is to open it if it doesn't open there's still too much of, of the steam gathering once you can flick the one handle and open it it's ready okay and I wish you could smell this. This for me, Bordelotti beans cooking with onions, with cloves, bay leaves. It smells like home. It smells like my mum's home. And look how creamy they become. Look at this. You can just crush them in your hands. This is delicious with a Sunday roast chook. It's a great substitute for rice, uh, for other types of beans. Um, like I said, a Sunday roast, we would have beans with this um, and it was with beans with our, our roast chook. It's just so yummy and it's also great like this. So, let's plate up. Question. Oh, yes. So, um, could this be made in the T-Fowl cook for me? Uh, this can absolutely be made in the T-Fowl cook for me. Same concept, same idea. Um, the great thing about the cook for me is that you can turn it on and put a timer on that too and it actually turns it off completely because it's an electric one so you don't actually have to turn the heat source off because it's electric obviously and um, it, it just does a brilliant job exactly the same job as it does the Clipso Minute okay um, so I'm going to add uh, before I do this no I'm just going to go straight on if you had a bit of garlic you could just brush the bread slightly with some garlic just to perfume it, okay? I'm not gonna do that. Oh, one thing I haven't done is season them. And this is a really important part of it. You wanna season your bordelotti beans after you've cooked them. Any pulse, from lentils to chickpeas, season them after. If you season them as you cook them, they're gonna be tough, they're gonna take longer to cook. So that's a general rule, just season them after and they do love their salt, so give them a lot of salt. And don't throw away this beautiful broth, it makes the best soups afterwards. So I think it's for Jules that said that she um, thinks that you can't make soup in it. Jules, I promise you, it makes soup and it makes such great soup and keep this beautiful broth here. Add some pumpkin to it, it is so yummy. Okay, so we're going to pop that on top. This is a very Tuscan dish. Um, very simple, not so attractive, but oh my gosh, the texture of the buttery, creamy beans um, and that crunchy bread is to die for. Now, anchovy lovers out there, you will understand me, you'll need this. This pop of salty, yummy savouriness is a must. Um, you can leave it off if you like if you don't like it. Um, other options, well, you could put a little bit of prosciutto um, underneath it, it would be so yummy. Salami, uh, there are so many, or just keep it 100% vegetarian, or, and therefore 100% vegan too, because there's nothing else in there um, with just the beans. Now, I need to give it a little bit more love with some oil, so a drizzle of oil on there. Um, we've got the parsley. I'm gonna add zest of lemon, just to give it a bit of a zing if you like and that's it the simplest economical delicious bruschetta you'll ever make it is so yummy um maybe i should have a taste should i have a taste i should have a taste you know I'm, when i'm tasting my food it's because i love it Honestly, so good. It really transports me back to Tuscany. And in these times when we miss going on holidays and we don't know when we're gonna go back on holidays, make food um, that evokes memory. That one right there, beautiful. La nice glass of Chardonnay with that. A fantastic way to start a meal. Um, even if you just got some friends, now we're allowed to have a few friends coming over. This is a fantastic option. All right, any more questions on the pressure cooker? Um, 
I really want to hone in on that because I just really love pressure cooking. I think it's one of those things that we need to be doing more of, particularly in the cooler months. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be putting more and more recipes up on Facebook and Instagram. Um, all right, that's it for that one. Let's get on to the next one. I do talk far too much. Chicken, southern fried chicken. I know a lot of you love your KFC out there. Um, and sometimes you want a lighter touch and you don't want to be frying it, but we want fried results and the ultimate fry does it. So this is my newest addition to my family. The ultimate fry is so good. I love it because it's small capacity, so it's not too large. Um, it cooks so well. It's like a mini oven, but a mini oven on steroids because it cooks so fast and it also gives you the fried results with half or very little of um, oil added to it. You don't even need to add oil to some recipes. In particular, this ultimate fry has a non-stick basket. I'm just gonna have to turn it around for a sec so I can get in there, okay? So here's the basket, okay? Um, this is really great. For example, I'm filming at the moment um, and I'm living in a very small place. For me, I don't want to turn the oven on. I just wanna have a quick dinner and this does it because it heats up immediately you don't even need to preheat you can put your food in straight away and cook it um, it's also got a smart um, interface over here so if you wanted to cook chicken it times it at 180 at 20 minutes it already knows um, how to do it fish fingers are fantastic homemade fish fingers it works a treat um, the other day on everyday gourmet we cooked a whole chicken so um, the best thing about this is you've got your basket so we're going to be doing southern fried chicken but it also if you just take that off you've got another basket this is a 1.2 liter basket and it fits a whole chook so we cooked a whole Cajun style chicken in it, took the chicken out, added some, um, what else did we do? Oh yeah, some corn, potatoes, and it worked so well. So I can't wait for you guys to see that. But today, this is my new favorite thing to cook, is the fried chicken. So I've got a combination of, um, a combination of chicken thighs and a combination of chicken legs. I like the skin on, there's all the flavor in the skin and bone in because the, when the bone's in, the more succulent the meat is going to be. Please bring your chicken out of the fridge at least an hour before cooking it. You want it to almost come to room temperature so it cooks evenly. It's got the bone in it too. So you want that beautiful um, Southern Fry style crispy crumb on the outside. Uh, sorry, it's more like a batter really, a coating. And you want it to be cooked all the way through. So bringing it out of the fridge earlier will help you do that. Um, okay, so to make our flour mixture, I'm using a combination of plain flour. I like the addition of potato flour. You could use corn flour if you like. Um, if you can't find it, I think there's a, a shop in most states called Source Food, um, and you can find that there. Um, a lot of Asian supermarkets have potato starch too. It just gives a really nice finish on the, on the batter, so that's why I add it. If you don't have it and you wanna make this today and you have an ultimate fry, just use plain flour, it works a treat too. So I'm going to mix into here uh, some cinnamon. Uh, sorry, I take that back. It's five spice, Chinese five spice. I've got some smoked paprika. And some southern fried chicken recipes have like 10 different spices. Forget about it. Even if you just wanted to keep it two, it should be garlic. So garlic powder and onion powder. Um, and that's delicious. The kids will love that too if you don't want to add the spices to it. So I've got a question for me. Yes, Jess. Um, and so basically she's asking, would you cook a chicken, chicken breast? pressure cooker like in a curry or would it dry it out great question so the question was would i cook chicken breast in the pressure cooker um, in a curry for example to be honest i don't use that much chicken breast because it's quite dry because um, it's very lean you can use it for chicken sandwiches colin you love chicken sandwiches <laughs> it's a hidden joke i probably shouldn't say that <laughs> um where was i yes so of course you can cook you can cook um poach or steam a chicken breast in a pressure cooker five minutes that's how long it would take um but if i was doing a curry chaz for example i would definitely use chicken legs chicken thighs because it's got a little bit more fat and therefore is better for those delicious stewy things like curry I hope that answers the question. So we're mixing that. I did add a lot of salt to that too. And we've got buttermilk. So that's all essentially you need a flour and you need buttermilk. I'm going to grab my chicken. 
We're going to pop it into. Has that come up to, to heat yet, Colin? Has it? High, 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 high. I'm going to crank it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to pop that in that buttermilk. You can flavour the buttermilk too, but like I said, I want to taste the chicken and I want this delicious crumb. That, I keep saying crumb, it's like a batter, okay, or like a, a coating. Then you just pop it into the flour and you want to tap that all over. Shake it off, the excess. And you see how it gets a little bit gnarly there and a bit, you know, chunky little bits and pieces. See that? That's the trick to southern fried chicken. See that? That's what we're after, okay? I'm gonna put that on a tray. I probably should have used a glove. I have washed my hands, but I'm just gonna to have to wash them again in a sec. So let's just do, I'm gonna do just a few. Oh, okay, I'm gonna to have to pause. Can you hear that? So that's what we're after. So I'm just going to, you want to move it over? Like maybe yeah, come in if you want. Come into the kitchen. So the pressure's gone off and the timer has gone off. So now you see it's flashing. I'm gonna turn it down and Collie's already done that. We're gonna turn it down and now it's going to start cooking for 20 minutes. Just at that gentle, so you can just hear it just gently whistling. That's the perfect sound to cook for lottie beans or just anything, that's the general rule. And that's why having an integrated sensor like this um, makes cooking easier for you. At the end of the day, um, that's what we're after. Okay, that's what I'm um, And I've worked with Tfal for many, many years now, and I've even been to the factory in France um, and just to see the production line, seeing the research and development behind it, you really get a sense of how much they care about making your life at home, the home cook, just easier, simpler, getting you in the kitchen um, and, and being able to create anything you want um, in an easy way. They've thought of everything. And I should mention uh, that pressure cooker is made in France, which is very unique these days. So um, I've seen them being made, um, they're reliable. We've got another question Yes. Katrina. Yes. Um, so what would you flavour the buttermilk with? Could this recipe be used for um, fish? Yeah. What could I flavour the buttermilk with? Yeah, I mean, look, if you wanted to, you could add the spices to the buttermilk if you like. You could add some minced garlic. That could be nice. Um, you don't really need to... I think basically if you see it as the buttermilk is the glue um, and also the buttermilk acts as a tenderizer. So today I'm not tenderizing it, but if you wanted to, you could put your meat into the buttermilk, into the fridge for um, a day. So just leave it overnight. And what it does, the acid in the buttermilk, it's a wonderful ingredient buttermilk. It just transforms everything. It's going to make your chicken even juicier than it already is. That's how fantastic it is. So these are quite large, these legs, and it'll probably just fit. So I'm just gonna add Get rid of that. I think that's plenty for us today to cook. I'm going to put them in the basket. I'm just going to wash my hands because it's not very attractive. Another thing is whenever you're crumbing or doing anything like that, it's always good to just use one hand and have one free in case you need to answer the telephone or pick up a child or things like that. A little trick. Ah! So good. Yeah. What's that, Collie's finished? What's that? You know, it's live. It's live, <laughs> Collie. <laughs> he hates when I make him do this stuff. <laughs> He's getting better. This year on Everyday Gourmet, stay tuned because Colin is doing two recipes. Do you know what you're cooking yet? No. <laughs> His food's amazing. His food is absolutely amazing. Um, okay, I digress. Let's get back to it. Uh, so our chicken's ready. You can do this, um, I'd say even 15 minutes to half an hour ahead of time and just let uh, the buttermilk soak in and let the flour soak in so it gets slightly sticky. But this is, you can almost see the, the southern fried chicken happening here. That's what we're after. That's the look that we're after. Now, 
Yes, you can fry this straight away, um, but you want to be able to get the gloss. It needs to be golden. But the whole point of showing you this southern fried chicken is to show you that we want to cut back the oil. We don't want to deep fry this. Of course, if you wanted to deep fry this, you can, and Tefal has many different deep fryers too, but this is to show you that you can also do it in a healthier way. Um, and that's why I'm going to be using an oil spray, just to lightly spray the chicken, the smallest amount of chicken. So Amy's asking another question. Yes, Amy. Um, what, what's your opinion on store-bought versus homemade buttermilk? Store-bought, what's, um, what's my thoughts on homemade um, buttermilk and store-bought buttermilk? Well, I mean, you can make your own buttermilk at home if you like. It's very easy. It's just split. Buttermilk is essentially, it's just splitting the, the milk. Um, but just buy it. Yeah, it's, it's not done. In the old days, they would do it, but it's just, no one does it anymore. You just buy it. It's just, and it's also very cheap. And it lasts forever in the fridge, by the way, so yeah. Okay, so we've just done that. And we're gonna pop it into the basket. Mary, did you wanna add anything else onto the, what we're talking about? On we've pretty much covered it, haven't we? we have it, yeah. You're the oh, Mary. So you can see it actually fits quite a lot. But because I'm doing butter chicken, sorry, butter chicken, that's for another day, guys. We're not doing butter chicken today. We're doing southern fried chicken. I don't want to overlap it because the skin's quite delicate. When you're deep frying, you've got a piece of chicken and the oil's completely around it and it's got time to sort of dance in the oil. We're here, we're doing it in a basket. The best thing about this tray too is underneath it, you can see that there's holes, okay? So what happens is the heat, the hot, hot heat, is going to go around the chicken in a 360 manner. So we're going to get that perfect, even color and coating. Where, let's just say you do this in the oven, you would have to put a tray onto a baking dish, put it on, keep turning it. I'm not even gonna turn this. You can if you want to, if you wanna get absolutely um, per, you know, golden, just making sure you keep an eye on it, you can turn it. But you don't actually need to do this on this because of the 360 heat that goes around. So in it goes, we're gonna turn it on and it's so easy to use. You can uh, modify it the way you like, or you could do it, uh, you could just press the chicken leg there, the chicken drumstick, and 180 for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna put it on for at 180 for 20 minutes. I'm gonna check it after that. It, I might even 15 minutes, we'll just check it. I just wanna really show you. Of course, I've made some beforehand, so we can continue on, um, but we will come to, back to that later on. Yes. Great question. The question was, do you need to preheat the air fryer? You don't need to preheat it. You just whack it in. I don't preheat it. It heats up like that. Um, if you wanted to, you could. Um, there are certain things, but I, look, I don't. There was another question I didn't answer before about the fish. Can you cook fish in this? It, it's actually got a function for fish. I'm just gonna stop it for a moment to show you. See, there's um, a fish function and it just tells you 160 for five minutes. So again, you could just do little um, goujons, if you like, which are kind of like fish fingers, um, or you could do fish fillets, work a treat. And the tray, it doesn't stick. It's a non-stick tray, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. Oh, there's another thing here. This is, this is a really, I love this. Um, if you wanna do some chips, for example, um, and you wanna make them yourself and freeze them, and then you don't even need to defrost them. You pop them straight in here, frozen, um, or you can do little chicken nuggets frozen straight from the freezer into the basket, turn it on, 20 minutes they're cooked. It's, that, that's easy. So especially when you do have little kids, I've got triplet nieces, my sister-in-law, this is what she's going to get. And my brother, by the way, he needs to do a bit more cooking around the house. They're getting this for Christmas for sure. Okay, so I'll go into that. Yes? Jen's enjoying Blaze, just asking what, what are you cooking? What am I cooking? Great question. So I am cooking. We've just done a bortolotti bean bruschetta. Um, we're up to southern fried chicken, but air frying it. So very little oil, but we're going to get almost exactly the same result. Just wait until you see this. Um, and then we're going to finish off with a bugatza, which we're going to get onto in a moment. But let's finish this chicken dish off. A few things that I'm adding to this. I'm just going to warm this up. Um, what I have in here is a combination of sweet chili sauce. I have um, some soy sauce for some saltiness. And I've also added some maple syrup because I love that woody, smoky sweetness. Um, so I'm just gonna warm that up. 
Um, I didn't add that to the recipe, but really it just needs something sticky for a gloss. It's not essential, but I'm just wanting to take it to the next level and show off a little bit. So that's why I decided to do this. So I just want to warm it up so I can brush it onto my chook. I'm just going to cut this in half. Is there another question? Yes. How do I wash the basket? Great question. So um, the only thing that won't wash is the handle. So you don't put that in the dishwasher, but everything else detaches and goes straight into the dishwasher. But I don't even do that because it's so easy to wash. I just hot soapy water, give it a rinse, back in there, ready to go. Um, yeah, and like I said, it's so cute that you could just leave it um, on your bench top. It's not intrusive, it's not big, it's, not, it's just quite neat. And it's also very light. So I, for example, because I travel a lot, and let's just say I've got to stay somewhere for a couple of months, as I am now, um, this is a great idea to take with me and I can just do a quick dish just for one person or two people, or like I said, you can cook a whole roast chook in that. It's pretty amazing. The tray is non-stick, yeah. Okay, um, I'm looking for my chicken. Here we go. <gasps> ready? Dun, 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 dun. Are you ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. Drum roll, please. Look at this chicken. I'm going to get a fresh, clean tray. There it is. I wish you could smell it. The five spice is amazing. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take it with my hands. And look at this. This is what we're after. See this? I mean, anytime I've had a little takeaway, southern fried chicken, the first thing I do is pick off that delicious coating. Oh, you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. You went down the wrong hole. <laughs> it's really crispy and it's really yummy. Oh, thanks God. Oh, Collie, what will we do without Uncle Colin? Ah, so good. It's so good. But it's going to be even better because what I'm going to do is take it out. Is there another question? Yes. Um, could you do a cake in the air fryer? You could absolutely do a cake. The question is, can you do a cake? It even has a dessert function over here. Um, I've done a, um, a sponge cake in it. It worked a treat. Um, you could do so many different slices. A brownie works a treat too. Okay, stop eating, Justine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the one I prepared earlier, but I'm going to show you as we go on. I'm going to get onto Bugatza and then we're just going to come back just to show you it cooking. See, there's a few little sticky bits there. Right there, that is the best part. And you can see it just doesn't stick. It just doesn't stick at all. Look how clean it is. Okay, and um, it's quite easy to detach. So all you really need to do is just press this button. So that takes out the tray. Let's just say you've got lots of chicken nuggets in here or some, oh, don't even get me started on the chips. We all know it makes the best chips. You just can pour like that. If you wanted to add um, the whole roast chook in here, you simply take the basket off and the handle goes onto the base like that. Okay, so this goes in the dishwasher and then this just wash, but just wash. I always, I'm very protective of my appliances and I just like to do it by hand just because I want to take extra care. All right, let me just... Yes, Tina. I've seen many posts about getting crispy pork crackling in an air fryer. Is it really that easy? What I have not done, Mary would like to answer this, Mary. Oh, sorry, I could never get pork crackling. Another brush, what do you need? another brush. Here's your brush, yeah. You've heard it from Mary. What else do I need to say? <laughs> in true um, southern fried style, I'm going to serve it in an American style basket. And this delicious sauce, you just brush over to give it extra gloss. Okay. Look at that. Look how shiny. Oh, isn't it beautiful? This is almost like the Korean style fried chicken. This is how they do it. Okay. Or just give him a little baste over here. Give that some love. Then we're going to pop that into our dish. You know, you won't feel guilty if you have a whole basket 
fried chicken now. This is the whole point of it. I love it. <laughs> Karen couldn't hear what Mary said. Karen couldn't hear what Mary... Come over here. Come over here. What did you say, Mary? Speaking to the I microphone. I said speaking to the microphone. What did you say? I could never get pork crackling just to that really crispy effect in the oven. But with the um, air fryer, it's just a no-brainer. It just you pop it in with your salt, your olive oil, and it just does takes all the guesswork out of it. It yeah. just does it all for you. Yeah, there you go. And I think also because it has that top heating at the top, you really do get, um, it dries out the top, you get it blistered and you get that crackling which you're after and then it stays quite moist and sort of protected in that um, nice deep basket and bowl. So back over to the chicken, have you seen how glossy it is? It is so beautiful. Let's put that one down there. Are we and then, a yes. How long did you cook the chicken for? The chicken, this one, just, this chicken in particular cooked for 25 minutes. And I did turn it once uh, just because I wanted to make sure that it was completely golden, but you didn't have to turn it. I'm serving this with cornichons, so baby pickles. And because we're going along the healthy fried, you could use mayonnaise, and I have put on my recipe mayonnaise, um, but I've done a little half mayonnaise, half um, yogurt, which is really nice to go with it. And you just drizzle it over. Ooh, so like I said, it looks really naughty, but We've only sprayed it with a little bit of oil. That's all we've done. So I'm um, pretty happy with that. Collie, come and try. Thank you. He's very critical of my food. Crispy and moist. Crispy and moist, good answer. <laughs> That's what we're after. Pretty good. <laughs> I'll put that there. Oh. <laughs> That's a win. That's a win. I'm just going to wash my hands. And we're going to do it again. <laughs> ah! It's hot. That chicken, it's so good. So moist and crispy in a nutshell. Okay, let's move on to um, what we're going to be doing next. We're going to showcase the Ingenio set. I'm going to bring this over here. Okay. So, we're going to make a bulgatsa. Bulgatsa is uh, a Greek baked dish, phyllo pastry, and inside there's a delicious custard. You could do it sweet, savory, you could do it with semolina custard. So, I'm going to be doing a semolina custard because it's very traditional. Uh, my friend Kathy Staples from Paran Market, if you've been to Sweet Greek, she makes a fantastic bulgatsa. So this is kind of her style. Um, I've put my tweaks on it. I've made a thicker custard and um, it is absolutely delicious. And I want to show you how to do it in this fantastic uh, kitchenware that's out at the moment that of course you can get here at Kitchen Warehouse. Um, it is the Ingenio set. What I love about it is it's all about being compact. It's all about being um, very, very tight. Look at this, we've got three lids. We've got um, all these storage lids too that come with it. We've got the pan, a 20 centimeter, a 26 centimeter. We've got two of um, the pots and a detachable handle. So if you need a space saving kitchen where if you're like looking for something where you've got smaller cupboards and you can't fit, you know, handles, this is it. And it fits so neatly and so seamlessly. My mum and dad, um, they're planning on, on going, getting a caravan and, and going away for a bit. This is what I'm getting them because they can put this on in the caravan. It's fantastic for camping. Um, it's also not only um, to cook in, but you can also use it uh, as a story. As I said storage, um, but it's also a great if you wanted to just serve the dish, serve the food in the dish, which we're going to do today, we're going to flip it out. But for example, you want to do an omelette, put it on the table as is. All right, I've got 15 minutes, so I need to get going. So we have melted some butter. I've not only melted it, I've made a clarified butter. Essentially, all we've done is just melted it and taken away the white solid parts. Um, that's what burns. And we want a beautiful, even color on our bulgatsa. Um, so that's going to be for our pastry. Colleague, because we only do have 15 minutes, do you want to give me a hand on this one? Yes, sir. Will you be able to brush my uh, phyllo pastry? No, I get rid of it. Yeah. Phyllo pastry. 
don't be scared of using phyllo pastry. I love using it. We've been using phyllo pastry on Everyday Gourmet for 10 years. In fact, this company, Antonio, uh, Antonio Filo, have been with us for the 10 years and they've been in business, an Australian company, they've been in business for 60 years. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, we love them and it's so easy to handle. You, know, you can be quite, you don't have to be so delicate with it because it's all going to be baked in the oven. So what we're going to be doing, Collie's going to be brushing it. And this is Coles I do. I do this at home now too. Get a, paste, uh, get a brush, like a painting brush. And obviously a very, don't use one that you've already painted with. That would be silly. Um, but you can see how much coverage you get um, when you use one of those. It's just a few strokes and it's done. We're going to fold it into a book. And we're going to be cooking in the 20 centimetre. This is heavy base. It's stainless steel on the outside and non-stick in the centre. Um, it has the thermo signal, uh, which is fantastic. So if you're frying and you don't know what temperature you need the pan to be on to cook the steak, to get at the exact temperature you need, the thermo, the thermo signal goes solid red and you know it's ready. 20 minutes already. There you go. Turn that off. Done. Yep, fold it over. Oh. So you're going to fold it over. We're going to brush it again. And then we're going to pop, I'm going to put some butter in here. And when you're making a bugatza, you want to line the base. So this is a trick Kathy showed me. Um, by folding it over, you're just saving the time of doing every single layer of phyllo. By doing that, you've already got a double layer. So that just makes it easier. And it also gives you reinforcement because we're doing quite a heavy custard. It needs to, it needs to be quite heavy on the base with pastry. So by doing this, we're only gonna need one, two, three, four, I'd say five to six pieces of phyllo that have been folded over. And look how easy it is. You just do that and then we we'll pop it in. You can brush it a bit more with butter if you like, but it's no big deal. And then in it goes, leave some excess pastry because we're gonna fold it, like tuck all that custard in like a little blanket. While Colin does that, I'm gonna get onto the custard. So again, we're gonna be using our Ingenio pots. I'm gonna use the larger pot and the detachable handle. This is brilliant. And you'll see it on Everyday Gourmet. I'll do quite a lot of recipes in the Ingenio. For example, you're cooking tart tatin, which is that very classic uh, French pastry with apples. You need to flip it. Sometimes when the handle comes with the pan, it's really hard to flip. With this, it detaches. So it's so easy to put something on top of it and flip. Okay, I've got to keep going, so let's do this. I talk too much. So Sabrina's got a question. Yes. Um, how do you manage phyllo pastry when you only want to use half and receive the other half? Great question, and yep. Can can phyllo be re I don't refreeze it. Collie, would you refreeze it? No, I don't no. just leave it in the fridge. So defrost it, um, bring it to room temperature. It's also it's much easier to handle, like we're doing here. Um, but yeah, just just put it back in the fridge. Wrap it up into some cling film. So put it back in its container into some cling film, um, and it'll last for for quite a few weeks for sure. Okay, so in here we're going to heat some milk. One liter of milk goes in. Got that either too hot or too cold. Okay, we're going to add some flavours to that. So some vanilla bean paste. You could use some fresh vanillas if you've got that. About a teaspoon, which represents, oh, I'd say one vanilla bean. Um, and I'm going to add some lemon zest. So change it up. I'm just doing it really simple uh, with some orange. Sorry, with some lemon and some vanilla but orange works really nice, cardamom works really nice. Um, I'm gonna be adding some cinnamon to the top of it, but if you wanted your custard to taste like cinnamon, you could absolutely do that too. Okay, so we're gonna bring that to the boil. Um, then I'm going to add my semolina. So this is fine semolina, okay, it's durum wheat. You can get it from every single supermarket now, um, and it's fine, see how fine it is? I love it, um, and this is gonna give us an instant custard, okay? Then I'm gonna add the sugar. I don't wanna add the sugar now to the, um, to the milk, and you can by all means, but because the sweetness in it, um, it will stick and we don't want that, okay? So always do it afterwards. Let's go and have a picky boo over here just to check it out. Ah, oh, hello. Look at this amazing chicken. Look at that one right there. So crispy. It's so yummy. So I'm not even going to turn it. 
I'm just going to let it keep cooking. And then it's got five minutes. And then after five minutes, if I feel the need to maybe just turn it so we just get some fresh heat on the, on the bottom, then we can do that. But God, it's good. So happy with that. Okay, you can stop there now? Yeah. Yeah, and that one more. Thank you, Collie. Okay, so now that this is heating up, we're gonna rain it in. You don't wanna be adding it straight away because it will clump. So just rain it in like so and whisk at the same time. Okay, and then it'll slowly, slowly thicken up. Okay. And it should take, how long did ours take the other day to thicken up? A couple of minutes, two, four minutes, please. Let's crank it. Do we have a little bit more semolina, Colin? A little bit of water. Semolina. I'm just going to add a little bit more. And I actually did change the recipe recently, like in the last few days. Um, and you guys will get that. I might just rein in a little more. Rein him in. Um, like I said, all these recipes are going to be on. That's plenty, Noel, thank you. That's better. See how it's thickening up now. Can't see. <laughs> and as this cools, if you can see me, <laughs> as this cools, it thickens up even more. Okay. I actually remember having something like this. I, I keep talking about my holidays, but I miss going on holidays. <laughs> um, Last year I did go to Greece, or maybe the year before that, and this is what we would have for breakfast. And it was just so yummy. They would serve it warm. You'd go down to the bakery um, and have this delicious um, flaky phyllo on the top, and then inside was just this warm custard with a thick black coffee. So good. Okay, see how fast that thickens up? That's what we're after. Sugar in. And that's it. I can smell the lemon. Beautiful. That's what we're after. Comes off the heat, okay? And then what I like to do is cool it down. If I'm doing this for some friends, if I wanna do this ahead of time, get everything all organized, make this the day ahead. It, it saves completely, it's very good in the fridge. Just break down the sides, okay? Let that cool and then pop it in the fridge. So I'm gonna put that one over here for a moment. And I'm gonna show you one that I made yesterday. We made yesterday. We made yesterday. And when it cools down, so you don't wanna obviously put your, your plastic on top of a very, very hot pot. So just let that cool. And you can pop the lid on, it seals it, and it also acts as Tupperware too. So, I mean, it, they've thought of everything. It's Tupperware, it's a dish you can serve in, um, you cook with it, it's, uh, it's story, storage savvy, like it's just a small little spot. So I just absolutely love that. And sometimes when I'm making a, you know, a tart in this, like a tart tata, sometimes you can just take that, pop the lid on it and uh, take it with you. It's fantastic. Okay, right, to fill this, you just want to loosen this up a bit. And you can see it thin out as you give it a good old mix. Oh, another little thing you could add to this, you could add some raisins. Raisins, absolutely delicious. Um, any dried fruit, if you want to make it a little more festive, give it a bit of a, a uh, Christmassy feel. Christmas in July coming up, why not make a sort of a Christmas style bulgatsa? Um, some so many different things you can do. You could put a little splash of brandy. Collie and I like a bit of brandy in ours. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Then we're going to just cover it, tuck it in like a little blankie. Actually, Collie, could I get a bit more um, phyllo pastry? Sorry, I forgot to do one thing. A bit more phyllo? Yeah, the other, the other, other one. Sorry, if we have it. The other, the other phyllo? If, oh, do we have any left, actually? Oh, oh you smooth talking. Deb was hiding it from me. I'm going to put this last one on top. Tuck it in again. Now, okay. 
And then what I like to do is just grab these and brush it. Just spread it out. Really roughly. And scrunch it so we make almost like a little flower. And we just stick them on top with a bit of um, little glue as in the butter. So just butter the top up. And you just put them on like that. Okay, so buttering. And it just looks so pretty as it comes out of the oven. You could add some icing sugar now too. To the top of it. So just so we get a golden finish on it. And this goes into the oven 180 and I'd cook it for about 35 minutes to 40 or until it's golden in colour. And that's plenty, Collie. Yep. Yep. And so as this goes into the oven, you would get your handle, pop it into the oven. Do not put your handle in the oven. That's the only thing that does go in. And then we'll bring it out. Ta-da! Here's one we've prepared earlier. Take it out of the oven, let it cool, um, and wrap that up, take that to your friends in the dish. When you get to your friends, how do you take it out? It's quite heavy, right? You could cut it into the dish, but I don't, I don't like to do that. I like to turn it. I'm gonna grab a board. Can I get that board, Collie, please? And I find this the easiest way to do it. And this is where you see how amazing it is to have a detachable handle because it comes off. And with, if the handle was on this and to turn this, it's on an angle, it's quite annoying. Take that off and it's seamless. Turn it. You hope it comes out. No. <laughs> Sorry, it will. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's just because he's cooled down a bit. <laughs> I just did this before we got Come here. On, pop it over. Go. Pop it over. We'll just warm it up. In the meantime, go over here. <laughs> oh, back to the chicken. <laughs> Chicken's looking good, isn't it? And see on the other side how it's quite golden too? So you can just turn it, just for it to dry out a little more. Yummo. Okay. So if that was coming straight out of the oven, <laughs> it would obviously, and you let it cool to room temperature, but if you want to demold it, here's a trick. Make sure it's not really cold. Ready? Ready. You ready? We've got one minute, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're taking it to your friend's house and you want to demold it, make sure you just warm it up slightly and that's what you would do for your tart tatin too. And there is our beautiful bulgatsa done. I'm going to cut a little slice. Colly, you've been amazing as usual. Before I do this, I'm just going to add some icing sugar and some cinnamon, small amount of cinnamon icing sugar, cut that. Collie wants to try this. Oh, listen to that crunch. And look at this inside. How beautiful. See that custard? Semolina custard. A few ingredients. Go on, Cole, you, have a you. taste. No, you, no, together. I insist. Mary, Mary, you've got to try it, Mary. Fresh, go on, Mary. Ready? Mmm, mmm. Pretty good. Mm. 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 Good work, team. Guys, guys <laughs> I hope you learned a lot. Gee, I felt like I was a master chef then with the timing. But um, we got there. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much to TFAL and to Kitchen Warehouse for having me back again. Hopefully, hopefully soon we can come back with you guys here with me. Mwah. See ya. Bye, Cole. Bye. Bye, Mary. <laughs> Thanks, Shaz. Oh, missed it. <laughs>